So continuing on with kind of my series of going through my different rock climbing shoes that I've used, let's go to the next one that I've got. So the next kind of shoe I got in the line from going, moving on from the Mira laces was the La Sportiva Otaki. Um, the Otaki was kind of the next step. And with that next step, I did go down a size. These are size at a 42. Um, so now I downsize a whole nother size from my mirror laces and two whole sizes from my street shoe size. And this is when I kind of started getting more comfortable with downsizing. But this shoe is kind of a good example of what I was really kind of looking for originally. Now, at the time, I was maybe just starting to branch out a little bit into some more outside rock climbing, but I was still pretty contained to the gym. And I was kind of looking for more of an easy shoe to get on and off. So Velcro was kind of a high up on my list. And that's what kind of led me to the Otaki. Now the Otaki, in today's world for indoor climbing, maybe not the best, you know, gym shoe. But as an overall shoe that can handle kind of everything that's thrown at it, these are a great shoe. Um, don't get me wrong. They perform pretty good at everything. You know, do they excel really at anything really good? Maybe actually, you know, some some of the top end climbers for La Sportiva prefer the Yotakis for really hard overhung limestone routes. And I can kind of see that because it's kind of a mix of everything you need. Um, you get good breathability. There's some things with it that offer good breathability, um, but you still get really high end performance with the shoes. So with that being said, let's kind of go list off some features of the shoes. So obviously the first one, they are a Velcro system. You know, Velcro systems are good for easy on and off. Are they the most secure fit? No. Are they the most, you know, tuned in and dialed fit? No. Um, but they do offer ease of taking them on and off. So that's what I was kind of looking for because I got tired of constantly lacing up and unlacing my shoes. So these were really nice to have. Um, so that's great. They also have a pretty interesting tongue. You know, it's a porphyrated tongue, so, you know, breathes a little bit better than previous, like just, just straight up leather tongue. So that's also nice. You know, they have good materials. Um, the straps are microfiber, but it does have a leather, you know, outer construction, but it is lined as well. So that lining, if you don't know, if a climbing shoe has a lining, it basically means that it won't stretch. And that's been a big caveat, not even a caveat, but it's just been the tradition with climbing shoes is, hey, once you get a climbing shoe, you know, you might downsize the crap out of it, but it's going to stretch to your foot. That doesn't happen when it's got a synthetic lining. In it. That liner makes it so the shoes don't stretch a whole lot. You know, they might stretch a little bit, but don't expect anything crazy. I mean, I think, I think the guide used to be that if you had a leather climbing shoe that was unlined, you can expect them to stretch like almost two sizes, I think was the old kind of method. Um, but if you have a line shoe, I don't even think that you stretch out like half size. So don't expect that with Ace or any line shoe for that matter. Um, so yeah, that was kind of, they're really great. They last a long time. They got quality materials. Um, but you can kind of tell that they are just kind of a mix of, of everything. You know, they have a little rubber toe patch. Would you want to do... Any like bat hangs off of it? I don't know. Probably not. It's not enough. Um, there are, are other models that have more of a toe patch covered. Um, kind of into that, you know, what is the last that are in the Squamous? It is the PD-75 last. Um, going on from the Mira vi video, but if you didn't know, PD-75 last is a commonly used last for Lost Sportiva. You know, we're talking, it is the, it's the Otakis, it's the Mira, Mira Lace and Mira Velcro. It's the Squama, and I think it's the Mantra as well, and the Solution Comp. Like, it's a lot of shoes from La Sportiva that uses PD-75 last. So if you know that that last kind of fits you, you know, you should be able to kind of get your size for it. Um, with some exception, exceptions, though, as this is kind of a weird mix of a kind of high and low volume shoe. You know, they're pretty low volume in the toes. They actually, actually, they actually have a pretty good wide toe box that we can kind of see. Um, but they're pretty high volume towards the midfoot. And for me, that's kind of a weird area because I have a pretty low volume foot overall. And I was finding that with the Velcro all the way cranked over, I would still get some like foot slippage and I wasn't 
super comfortable in the shoe. Now, could that be that I just didn't downsize enough? Could, it might, probably is. Um, but yeah, I don't have a great fit in these, but they work good enough. And you know, there's some kind of things that, you know, take up because of the fit, you know. They are more of a stiffer shoe. Um, they're, they're stiffer than the Miras, and they're stiffer overall because they do include Los Sportiva's P3 system. This P3 system basically retains the tension around the toe to keep that downturn. I mean, these shoes I've had for, I want to say like two years, and they still have a downturn. So that's awesome to see, and it's really cool to see that P3 technology, which just keeps that constant power and downturn in the toe, so you never have that debt, and it's never degrading over time. I degrade a little bit, but not a whole not a whole lot. So, but also you have Vibram XS Edge, which is a very hard rubber. It's still st sticky, but you know for gym climbing, maybe not the best. But for outside climbing, it's a really great compound. But what you get with that is a pretty stiff toe box, stiff this way, and stiff torsionally. So you know because I didn't have these at the tightest, there's a little bit of leeway in there because they are pretty stiff. Um, but definitely there were some things about these shoes that if you don't get the right fit, they might not work greatly, great for you. And what I'm actually kind of alluding to is the heel. So this is kind of more of a different heel from La Sportiva. I can kind of tell by the looks of it. It's different. It's not a standard climbing shoe heel. That's because it is La Sportiva's S heel. Now this is a heel that is basically shown to be it's like a supportive heel. As weird as that is to say, it, it's kind of true. Um, this heel has like a little bar right here, but basically when you're heel hooking, it, the heel doesn't deform, which is really nice. You know, I didn't know how much of an actual difference it is to have this type of heel, but kind of using some other shoes from Lost Rativa that don't have this technology, it is more apparent of what the S heel does. But the caveat with this is you really have to get a good fit with the heel because for me, the heel's too big and I have dead space in there. And I'm at a 42 and I downsized two for my street shoe size. So I don't know, I think my fit for this would probably be like a 41, maybe. And yeah, so the S heel, if it, you get a good fit, it will work. Um, even if you don't get a good fit, you'll kind of feel the difference, but for me, I don't have a great fit with this and it leaves more to be desired because when you have like that dead space in it because the heel is a little bit more stiffer than any other heel of any climbing shoe, you kind of lose your sensitivity in the heel. So when you're heel hooking, you're not totally sure what's going on. So just be aware of that. And if you didn't know that the Squama also uses this heel and basically the Otaki is more the stiffer version of the Squama. You know, there's some things that make the Squama different, like it's got one strap and it's got a little cutout right here so you get better um, flex in the forefoot. So, but basically the Otaki and the Squama are like brothers. They just, they're basically the same shoe with some slight differences. And kind of with that being said, Sportiva also has a vegan version of the Squama. So look out for that. But overall, the shoe, it still performs good. You know, I use it on and off. I kind of use this shoe as like a gym shoe now, but not really. I've kind of just moved on from it. Um, but it, it was definitely a stepping stone in kind of the shoes I was looking for for climbing. Kind of figured out what I'm looking for. There's definitely some good things about this shoe, um, but there are things to be desired for me. And a lot of that could be due to the fit. Um, but are they a comfortable shoe? Yes. Yes, they are. Are they a good shoe from La Sportiva? They totally are. You know, if you can get these in the right fit, they'll work great for you. I see a lot of people use these shoes and a lot of people are happy with them. Um, just for me, I was looking for something a little bit different. But yeah, so overall, it's kind of like my overview of the La Sportiva Otaki. If you have any questions about these shoes, feel free to leave a comment. I'll hopefully get to it as soon as I can. And Hopefully I got enough time in these to actually answer any questions. Um, it will be limited though because, you know, it's all based on size. Like if you're if you're going to downsize the crap out of these, you might get slightly better performance. I didn't, so I don't know if the performance is skewed a little bit. But yeah, so just be aware of that if you have any questions. But with that being said, 
Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.